this is an interesting story because you know it's the baby and he's always in the press but the baby's had a really interesting career uh trajectory right because usually you know i've kind of knew of the baby mostly due to his kind of antics away from music right the first story that kind of came within the what kind of circulated around him was the fact that he uh defended himself i think in the supermarket or it might have been in like a car park of course it was definitely near walmart somebody tried to rob him and then he basically uh, fired back in a state where you are allowed to have a gun he's got a license for it and defended himself and the dude ended up dying right so that was a story that kind of popped off and that kind of gave him this reputation of being a dude that doesn't take any shit and other things happened that since that incident fights with you know people in clubs fights with other no rappers no somebody else yeah rappers or in that shopping mall that famous one where the dude's pants fall off um some of them made him look tough some of them made him look cool some of them just were just a bit unnecessary but then it got to a point where the frequency of the of these kind of uh, stories seemed to give rise to the suggestion that maybe he's got some sort of anger issues right so maybe there's something wrong with this dude like he's been too conditioned maybe living a street life that he's unable to deal with conflict and deal with yeah deal with conflict and arguments in a civilized manner without having to resort to violence he doesn't know anything else because he's the environment he grew up in the way you deal with problems is neat violence with violence and it is what it is or just issues you just that's how you just deal with stuff that's how you kind of stamp your authority and let people know you're not fucking around but now he happens to somehow then again this is just considering how people love to counsel people and the fact that you know he's having to deal with music executives who kind of get a bit shook and panicky when somebody has you know tattoos and wears colorful trousers and shit so imagine somebody like him right they get a bit nervous but the fact that he's been able to kind of turn such an ugly period of his life i'd say not ugly but maybe an unfortunate period of his life because he might say ugly. he might say look i was within my right to defend myself but he, the fact he's able to turn such a bad situation into a good for himself and his family and his friends has been quite marvelous to see he's become the next hip rapper in the moment everyone's got as the, everyone seems to have their little moment the kind of pop moment right migos had their moment um travis scott had his kind of moment in the pop kind of sunlight everyone seems to get like a slight shine on him in that moment asap rocket had his little moment too they all have their little moments kendrick has his moment every time his album drops and the baby seems to be the newest guy out right he's doing the features with everyone under the sun he's putting up a big step and album after album everything seems to be going well for him but he seems to still be getting himself in these situations where he's having to exert extreme violence or acts of violence in order to kind of uh, get his way in things and this story from tmz is another one which we're not too sure if it's real because he came out and said it's all cap and it's not true but i just wanted to speak on it because there was a really interesting quote from this new book from 50 cent called i think hustle hard or hustle hard or something like that right something about hustling it's, it's a new book that he brought out basically he's kind of life lessons that he's learned over the time you know going from where he went from um from the streets to the kind of boardroom and you know being the highest paid cable executive i didn't know that at the moment with the stuff that he's doing with stars and everything else he's got a really interesting quote in the book about tony Ayo, one of the founding members of you know g unit who's known as the kind of wild boy of the group right the sort of quote unquote the shooter of the team and I think a lot of what he says about Tony Yeo resonates with this the baby story in general. And it's a kind of uh, cautionary tale about how he needs to kind of fix up and not get into a point where his career gets real, like, you know, his career goes off the rails due to the stuff he's doing outside of it. But this is the article from TMZ. He says the following. The baby allegedly attacked the driver in Las Vegas. So, um... Da, 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 da. This is a uh, let's do the original the original story. The baby can't keep his hands to himself. If you believe a driver who claims a rapper de- attacked him when an argument quickly turned physical, law enforcement sources tell TMZ the driver got a call to pick up the baby in Vegas back in November of last year. Right, the rapper and some friends uh, hopped into his Mercedes Sprinter van. We're told a few stops. After a few stops, the baby and his friends sparked a joint and the driver told them that that's not a no-no. Which is interesting, isn't it? Because I think that bit is probably true. It's a thing that, I don't know, I remember, I think Joey Diaz maybe have said it once, like, you know, there's no need to be smoky when you're driving, isn't it, right? If you're going to go to your destination, like people that eat in their car whilst they're driving, just park up somewhere and have your meal, right? There's no need to be, like, doing two things at the same time. You can just chill and take it easy, especially in the States where the weed laws are a little bit more relaxed than they are and maybe anywhere else in the world. There's no need to really kind of push the envelope. And I've always been, and it's part of me as well, that's a bit, it's similar, has the same kind of 
thinking when it comes to Uber drivers and putting on your own music. There are occasions where if it's, I don't know, maybe it's a long trip or maybe you're tired or maybe the guys, I don't know. There are occasions where it could be necessary to kind of just put it on in the background. But there are times as well when you're going somewhere five, ten minutes away. Do you really need, do you really need them to put on these aux cable and connect it with you? I don't really think it's necessary. Um, I'd much rather just like, you know, leave the guy alone and, you know, kind of have some respect for his space. Because, you know, in general, he's taking you in his car to a destination safely. And if I can make conversation, I can. If I'm not bothered, I won't, in it? Like, humans are able to do that. We're able to make that kind of judgment based on the energy that we have when we're in the same space. But there's no point in taking liberties, right? Sneaking a drink in that's open and drinking it. You know, I've always, if, if I had a drink in my hand, I'm going to go to an Uber. I've always kind of asked the driver, hey, do you mind if I just hold that one drink it? I'll just put it aside. And I don't then go in and then drink it. Just little things that you don't do, in it that I think are really interesting or you know adding stops that you haven't put in the app on there and just being annoying just be a courteous person so I don't really see the need of sparking a joint but I can imagine you know American rapper right at the fucking mount you know right at the tip of the mountain in terms of his influence and his kind of notoriety just feeling like he's on indif- indif- uh, what's it, just feeling as if he's uh, not indefensible what's that word it's too much weed feeling as if like there's nothing that's going to happen to him right there's no it's just you just feel undefeated it's like when young people in it who just have that reckless abandon but yeah continues it says that cops say the rapper and his friends started cursing out the driver and threatened him when they got to the hard rock hotel the driver told his passengers it was time to pay up the driver claims the baby punched him in the back of the head and said you ain't the boss jesus christ our law enforcement also say one of the suspects said you're lucky you're not in my city because i would have killed you you cracker motherfucker wow we're told the baby and co got their bags but not before someone allegedly said we we would have left the driver dead on the road we're told there's now an active arrest warrant to bring in the baby for this misunder this miss what's that what's that word called misdemeanor battery i wonder why is something happened in november is only getting reported now why is that these the timings of these things always seem to be odd to me don't get me wrong the album came out what a couple of weeks ago but the fact that the allegations are already coming out now given how famous he is is interesting the fact that the detail the fact that it was leaked to tmz beforehand it just seems a bit weird i'm not too sure if i believe everything about this as reported, says here, follows on, um, the baby's had a spare share. Okay, cool. It's just talking about the incident he had with the kid in the hotel room. But I thought this quote from 50 Cent really explained why a lot of people are worried about the baby and want him to, like, kind of chill out. Because this story can end another way. Like, you know, the story of Tony Ayer where he effectively, I think 50 Cent says in this kind of clip I'm going to show you, and listen, so you can listen to it now from the audio book, but he essentially says Tony Ayer sort of didn't, need, didn't really grow up along the way he kept trying to you know he kept thinking he could deal with the executives the same way he deal with people in the street by just you know intimidating them with you know threats of physical violence or whatever it may be and um yeah i think this is a really cautionary tale for the baby but let's play it now so you can just can you hear it it should be playing now i think this book is out now on all you know, Tony Yayo's issues were a little different. Like Banks, Yayo was from my neighborhood. But unlike Banks, he didn't stay on his stoop. He was very much in the street and running into as much action as he could. Yayo was wild from the day I met him. In our world, it was a temperament that served him well. He was liable to do anything at any time, and people gave him a wide berth because of it. At the time, I aided Yayo in being so wild. As a crew... We needed that aggressive and unpredictable energy. Even after we first started experiencing success, we were still living that lifestyle. We didn't see any reason to change. That meant we were going to be very aggressive in taking what we felt was ours. If someone disrespected us or got in our way, our response was to get them out of our way, whatever it took. One of my skills is I absorb information and process it faster than most people. So even as we were running wild through America's stadiums, nightclubs, and hotels, I was beginning to pick up signals that we were going to have to change how we approach things. The most obvious sign was that there were police everywhere we went. Stadium concourses, hotel lobbies, out in front of clubs, the cops were always there. We would think there was no other crime happening in whatever city we were in, considering the way they followed us around. Some of the other signs were less observable. There was a lot of nervous energy around us. 
It's an easy thing to miss when everything's moving so fast. But if you look past people's acquiescence, the fear is evident. I could read it in radio jocks, studio engineers, TV hosts, club managers, booking agents, and program managers. They wanted to do business with us, but not if they thought a gunfight might break out at any second. And I think that was the main bit at the end, right? And I think that goes to show as well why it's hard. Sometimes it can be difficult, I understand, if you're looking from the outside in and your situation isn't where it needs to be and there's people online sort of like flouncing their success in your face, you know, in your eye, in the way you kind of interpret it. It can be hard to kind of appreciate just how much, what goes into making yourself somebody, turning yourself into somebody at 50 Cent nowadays, right? Especially if you forget you know how he came into the scene and the kind of uh folklore around him and the stories you'd hear about how he moved and what they got up to it can be difficult to really um kind of put into words just how much he has evolved as a person over the you know last few decades but it's also evident that it's no fluke it's no mistake that he was the one in that group that was able to kind of transcend his music transcend his influence in hip-hop even and somehow permeate through culture with the stuff he's done with pop power and other stuff that he's producing at the moment um and it's something that you have to learn on the go and it's something that you have to learn quite quickly because no one's going to tell you because easily in this situation you know when they were going around intimidating everybody and causing a ruckus someone at his record label could have pulled him to one side and said hey you're gonna fuck up the bag you're gonna fuck up the money you guys need to chill out all right you know some people someone might have done that but it's more likely than not that the executives at record labels when they see an artist acting wild doing crazy shit and they still got all the attention and the light is on them right because everyone gets this moment in the light um that's bringing them money it's raising you know their, their 10 percent is clock coming in at lightning speed right they're getting more press more press is coming to you people in the industry know what you're doing it's a because i'd assume every executive that is able to find a 50 cent it maybe adds maybe like a decade to your career in it because you can use him as part of your cv he's part of your uh, portfolio he's part of using your deck right so he knows that executive knows every success that 50 cent has as another year like every album is another year or two years to his career so those people are going to be you know it's not in their interest to tell you to calm down but it takes a really wise person to look themselves in the mirror and say you know what i'm fucking up the bag i need to make some changes because the things that he's talking about the intimidation thing is not thing something someone's going to tell you it's something that you need to see yourself and i think the fact that tony a wasn't able to see that and was still going around acting like a goon especially nowadays you know not embracing social media i think this is in the end of this clip is something that i'm seeing a little bit in what's happening with the baby i think he's reaching a point where you know especially with this amount of light intention he's got in his name he can't be going around especially himself like if you're going to because I'm, I'm sure there's rappers out there that get into scuffles and stuff but they have people that they can you know um that they can delegate that that sort of you know those sort of tasks too they don't need to be there doing it or whatever i'm sure these things happen behind closed doors pretty sure people have their differences they run into each other small circle small world if you're you know in the one percent of the one percenters but for him to be you know put himself in harm's way in this position isn't the best and also there's an ad did you hear a lot from people that practice martial arts or any kind of self-defense they always say you know there's always a bigger better person out there um even in some self-defense videos you see online when they talk about how to defend yourself in a street fight they always number one so especially in the gracie breakdown videos they always say the number one objective is to kind of get your get yourself away from the situation remove yourself get your family and your friends away from that situation as fast as possible because you don't know if that person's got a gun if they've got a knife or if they just you know imagine you happen to bump into francis nangano before he's made it in the street and he wants to but he wants to fight he's an aggressive person what do you do you don't know he's a francis nangano you just see this big black dude and he ends up sparking all your friends out you get brain damage and shit you know what i mean like so the adage is that even if you are trained even if you are Mugo Krokov, even if you are damien meyer whoever it may be you don't want to put yourself in a position where you might have to use physical force because you know there's no predicting where a fight can go there's a story just recently about a kid you see that video about a kid in america to play fight with his mate and he gets an overhand right i think they play boxing in the street and he falls and bangs his head on the floor has a seizure that you see all the time especially watch Walsa, um Walsa hip hop uh, videos of fights and stuff you see those seizures that people have when they bang their head on the floor or they just collapse on the floor all the time it's not something that's uncommon he has a seizure and you don't think anything of it you just think yeah he got knocked out in a fight he should be okay and then it transpires a couple of days later that that dude passed away you know these things happen so 
to put yourself in a position like this where you know imagine you bang you kick the guy in the back of the head and he ends up you know hitting his head on the steering wheel and goes out it's just it's just unnecessary all of it but the update of it is i think his lawyers are denying it right this is update as of today it says uh their baby's attorneys drew fielding told tmz it's a 100 percent false accusation which suspiciously pops up in february regarding an alleged incident in november we can smell another attempted money grab which is, which is fine i guess if the lawyer is that confident that his client hasn't done anything i'm not sure sure what the rules are between you know um what they call them clients and them lawyers do you have to tell them the truth how do you know you're telling the truth i'm not too sure if he's telling the truth and it didn't happen fair enough and i guess that cab driver would have to get shamed named and shamed because you know trying to exploit the situation of somebody is not cool but if it isn't true and he did actually do it he's gonna need to look himself in the mirror and try to rein it in before somebody reins it in for him in terms of you know enacting some kind of retribution or just you know the checks start drying up like i think that's why which is makes him look worse actually in the situation if he could look worse but that's probably that's part of the situation what happened with six nine isn't it part of why that went completely sour was because all the shenanigans he did in the streets were ending up you know fucking up the fucking up the bag right stuff he's doing in the streets and social media antagonizing people was affecting where he was getting booked people were canceling shows police departments were contacting venues event because they want to take the risk it was affecting his money so he effectively kind of threw all his fellow uh, co-conspires under the bus because he wasn't able to get the amount of returns that he wanted on his shows or whatever maybe or he wasn't able to book them with a level of frequency that he wanted and he'd be snitched on everybody some people that he even paid which is the scary part of it right he pays somebody to do a hit for him um and then he snitches on that person that he paid it's just like wow and he gets out before that person gets out as well which is even more scary but I don't know man I don't know I, I just really wish he kind of was able to rein it in because I'm a big fan of the dude again his music is a bit formulaic a bit samey but his videos are incredible his personalities you know you could just you just know when someone's a star he's a star from just his personality his charisma um, the fact that he's from North Carolina as well is just an interesting part of the story too he's not from you know one of these like hot cities for hip hop melting well because Carolina has got a steep history in hip hop but he's not from a glamorous place in America and he really reps where he's from you know and his story is inspiring you know for the fact that how he's turned it around and been able to become one of the biggest stars in the world and again it's like him and Doja Cat are the ones that you look at and you think you wouldn't have guessed they were going to be the big people in terms of streaming or even NBA Youngboy is number one there's these people that happen to pop up and you just you know if you put them in a lineup you would never guess the baby would be the dude who'd have his moment and be featured on you know i don't know a selena gomez remix and shit. that's when you know you've made it you start jumping on all these remixes of big pop stars and stuff and he's having his time to shine and you don't want it to end prematurely for something stupid you know if you want to tap out and do something else in your career fair enough but don't let your kind of idiotic young boy kind of like machismo bravado put in a situation where suddenly now you're having to take your kid out of private school because you haven't the checks are not coming in as frequently as they were in the past um but again if it's a fake story then you know this can all be forgotten but hopefully he's able to kind of you know avoid these instances or at least pay somebody to beat people's heads you know what i mean that's that's all right but doing yourself is a bit long